Something on Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Able Den On Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. Arlene is off today. We would like to welcome Patrick Donegan, Interim Executive Director of um, of Good Samaritan in Barrie. Welcome to hey, Able Den On Air. Thanks for and having And thank you to our sponsors. Tell me the missions and goals of Good Samaritan, because I know you guys are doing a bunch of good things now. Yeah, we do a whole lot of stuff, but our, our main goal, our main objective is, is to provide emergency shelter mm -hmm. for, for people that need it for, for a number of different reasons. Well, okay, when we say emergency shelter, what exactly, for those that don't know, what exactly does that mean? That means that we see individuals that have uh, a no place safe to sleep that night. Mm -hmm. um, whether uh, we see people that are fleeing domestic violence, people that have been uh, kicked out of the place they live, maybe they're staying with people and, and can't stay there anymore. Um, there's a number of different reasons, but 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 if if somebody doesn't have a safe place to stay at night, mm -hmm. um, you know we tr try to provide shelter for them, a safe place, a warm meal, a shower, and right, um, th those vital things are important. Now you guys are in Barry, and yep. I've, I've interviewed you guys before. We can show some extra clips, but um, how many beds is in the Barry facility, and then? go through Montpelier, what you guys are doing now. Yep, so we have 30 in Barrie. Mm -hmm. um, at the seminary, we have, we have a, our main location is, is the 105 North Seminary, mm -hmm. where we visited before and, and did an interview. Mm -hmm. um, then we have a seasonal emergency shelter that's also in Barrie at the Heading Church. Mm -hmm. And there are 14 beds there. Okay, and, and, that, and you, uh, do you separate women and men how does that work within um the that shelter? that shelter typically at our main shelter on seminary street there's women's dorms and men's dorms mm -hmm. and then there's an area to set up cots that we try to accommodate couples if they'd like to be there mm -hmm. um and the the heading church happens to be all men we see more men than women actually mm -hmm. um for single adults that are looking for shelter um so we 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 have more, typically more, uh, a male than female guest. Um, okay. So Heading Church is is mostly all male uh, this year and last year. Mm -hmm. We could accommodate a female there if, if if we needed it and somebody needed shelter and they were comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's a, a for some of the churches besides having the shelter there, they also provide meals as well. Sure. So that's a that's a big you know, and Barry actually. Um, uh, there's breakfast provided almost every single day um, in Mount Pillar. There is a lunch provided almost every day. Um, we provide bus passes for free mm -hmm. to people so that they I know you guys have had plenty of um, fundraisers where organizations like GMTA have given bus passes, have given laundry detergent and other things yep. um, to you guys that's vitally needed. Yep, so, so we, try to, we try to accommodate guests so, you know, if transportation's a problem, they can access these meals that happen in Montpelier mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, um, if, they, if they're staying in Montpelier and need to get to Barry because a lot of the services are, that are provided actually are through Barry, the McFarland mm -hmm. building with economic services and social security and stuff like that are. Now, what exactly, if a person needs certain things like social security, food stamps, um, how, do, how does your intake uh, 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 process work? So when an individual comes to us, um, you know, we have a very thorough in, intake procedure mm -hmm. and we try to uh, first make sure the person's okay mm -hmm. and see if they need any immediate medical attention or, or anything like that. Um, try to meet the person where they're at 
And then we let people get settled in first. Um, but we do have an intake procedure to see what people have, if they have food stamps, if they have money coming in. But, but really, when people are coming in in, in, in a crisis-type situation, with, you know, as you can imagine, if you have nowhere to stay, that, that's, that's, that's the, pretty... Define crisis. What exactly is the definition, in your opinion? Well, a, a, a crisis can mean a lot of different things, but a crisis as far as is, is being homeless, I mean, you know, think about the middle of winter in Vermont having mm -hmm. nowhere to stay. Exactly. Uh, to me, that's a crisis. Um, so... So what we try to do is make that person as comfortable as possible, let them get a warm shower, let them have a meal. Then we have, um, we have an employee that works with us through Washington County Mental Health. We typically like uh, everyone within three days to meet that individual. Um, he's great. Um, and, and, and he'll help us decide if, if, if the person maybe needs um um, medical to, attention. To, to get some medical attention, whether they need to um, uh, touch base with Washington County Mental Health, uh, drug and alcohol, if they need a counselor to help with that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they're assigned uh, a housing coordinator, which is kind of a housing coordinator slash case coordinator. Um, you know, it's a small nonprofit that we run. Um, but small nonprofit, but you're doing bigger things. We you're do expanding. a lot of work. So we, we have to wear a lot of hats. Yeah, and so we we try to provide case coordination, all of us in our own way, um, and uh, uh, you know, um, and part of that is, is is figuring out what people need to kind of take those next steps to 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 you know find the path away from homelessness, mm -hmm. you know, and and our, and our goal for every individual is you know first to shelter them to have you know people stabilized and comfortable and safe mm -hmm. then to figure out help figure out you know what needs to be done so that you're not in this situation again talk about um, the ending homelessness in 2020 because I know that's been a large situation within Washington County that you not, to... that's actually a state thing that's not just Washington County and the goal is you know what we're finding is that you know we're trying to, to the, we're trying to collaborate with our other community partners. Um, you know there's amazing organizations out there. Um, Capstone does so much for people and does so much for the the homeless population. Um, they're a huge ally of ours. Um, what does what does Capstone do? Capstone does uh, so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, they help with housing, case coordinating. I mean they they do the Head Start program. I mean. I could go on and on, but mm -hmm. but they with us specifically, um, you know, they help us get our people into the right programs and mm -hmm. uh, Washington County Mental Health, um, you know, uh, Vermont uh, Vermont Housing. You know, we we work with a lot of different agencies, and there's agencies across the state that the goal is to end homelessness by 2020, and and by collaborating with one another. We're hoping to make that a possibility and, and finding that not duplicating services. Exactly. And, what do you mean by duplicating services? Uh, so if, 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 say, you ran an organization, um, you know, right down the road, and we were both trying to house the same person, mm -hmm. it'd make so many people needing housing, it would make more sense for us to collaborate with one another and say, hey, okay, you're trying to house Jane Doe and I'm trying to house Jane Doe. Why don't we put our resources together and, and, and I'll work on this end and you work on this end. You yeah. know, so that we're not doing the same thing. And, and, you so know, you're not overstepping each other? Each other, we have limited resources in the state. And um, you know, there's, there's not a ton of people and there's not a ton of revenue. So we have to be really smart with the dollars that we have. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing. Um, that, that Vermonters have been great at is I think um, approaching these social issues um, in an intelligent manner and using you know all the resources that we have to the fullest. Okay, now you guys are expanding. Uh, I understand that there's uh, in Lamoille County there's a new shelter happening. Explain about that. Yep. So this year we're the fiscal manager and overseeing. Um, a group in Lamoille County that um, was a small grassroots uh, kind of organization last year 
and uh, very noble organization. They they uh, were tr just trying to take people. There's no homeless shelter in Lamoille, and and we're putting people in different churches and doing different things. And um, this year, uh, you know, really kind of started working with us to become a bit more organized. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some help with the fiscal management and and stuff like that. Because um, I know a lot of churches and uh, are helping you guys you know, put this together, it was yeah. extremely important. Yeah, without the faith-based community, all this would be very difficult. Um, the area churches do a lot, um, but to circle back to the Lamoille, that actually, that they're gonna be uh, opening in their space mm -hmm. um, in the next week or so. So that's a huge thing. Um, it's a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. uh, um, there's a gentleman that owns a property that has, has donated the property to, to actually the sheriff in that county. Uh, to 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 be a shelter, which was um, just an amazingly uh, you know positive thing for the homeless community with no one there, mm -hmm. um, and so so that's great. It's a huge step for Lamoille County um, in that whole Morseville and Hyde Park area. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> being special needs and being homeless might be a double-edged sword. Explain in your opinion. What are some of the misconceptions around? Because when someone sees a homeless person, they might be afraid of them because of uh, challenges. So explain some of the misconceptions that, so you know we can, you know, because homeless people are 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 people as well, sure. and it's, there's just a stepping stone that they have to go through. So explain some of the misconceptions in your opinion. So, I think you know you get the the. You see the homeless person that you know Hollywood would portray, and you might see them as dangerous mm -hmm. or um, you know scary in some way. You know you kind of cross to get on the other side of the street. Um, there's a lot of people that work in this community that you see on a daily basis uh, that are homeless that you would never know are homeless mm -hmm. that stay in our shelters and then go to work all day that just for whatever reason ended up homeless but are working really hard at transitioning out of homelessness. Um, so, I mean, people end up homeless homeless because of maybe, you know, loss of income, loss of housing. How does one end, is there a catch-22 here? Like, how does one end up homeless? Well, there? th there's a lot of different things. I mean, frankly, there's a lot of people that deal with severe mental health issues that aren't being helped. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and maintaining um, a living space is very difficult for them with the other things that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of folks that are dealing with, um, you know, addiction. Mm -hmm. And, and we're seeing, all, unfortunately, a lot more I've done young a people. Of shows that, yeah. and, 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 and so we're seeing a lot more people that are, you know, 18, 19 to 25 that are in the shelter than ever before. And um, you So know, do you see more within Good Samaritan? Is it more young people or um, young adults versus o older adults? Because once you hit the older population, I, yeah, I wouldn't say that. It, it kind of comes in waves. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, homelessness affects all. Everybody. Yeah. All any, ages. Any age, all ages. Yep. That type of thing. So, what are some of the future goals of Good Samaritan that you guys are um, working on? Besides yep. this, these, these new places. Um, you know, just continuing, you know, we... we we always want to expand. Um, you know, we've been really lucky. A couple of years ago, the state um, made it possible for us to double in size, and uh, we've been full. Uh, our, you know, in the winter, our, our, our beds are full. So, um, you know, uh, any chance we have to continue to um, make sure that no one's sleeping outside mm -hmm. in, in, in these tough Vermont winters is really first and foremost, our, our main goal. Now, I know that in 1986, uh, Good Samaritan started. Uh, what was some of the backstory behind that? That was long before my time, mm -hmm. um, but it started as a small faith-based organization, just churches in the Barrie area 
recognizing uh, that there was a homeless problem mm -hmm. in central Vermont and uh, kind of stepping forward to uh, try to do what they could to help. Okay. Um, so if people wanted to um, come to Good Samaritan, you know, if they had, you know, if they needed services, um, uh, what is your address and, and phone number that people can uh, uh, reach out to you guys? Okay. Well, it's uh, 105 North Seminary Street. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would like to say before we end the show that's real important for people to know about uh, Good Samaritan? Um, no, just, just you know, um, we rely on donations a lot mm -hmm. and any little bit that people can uh, provide to help, even if it's just a small amount, um, really helps us. Um, you know, uh, over a third of, of um, you know, our operating money comes from donations. What type so. of donations? Uh, uh, food, because I understand that you guys have, um, you know, People donate dinners, you know, they can donate food, they can donate clothes. What exactly, what type of donations are you guys taking right now? That's uh, important. Food, clothes, money's always huge. Obviously, we have to keep the lights on, um, mm -hmm. so. Okay, well, I would like to thank you Thanks, for Larry. joining me on this edition of Able Dinner on Air. For more information on Good Samaritan, you can log on to their website at www.goodsamaritanhaven.org. This puts an end to this edition of Able Did On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. Arlene is off today. Thank you for our to our sponsors. See you next time. Able Did On Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Able Den On Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together.